Karibu kwenye channel ya Dr. Mary Lectures. Tunafundisha masomo ya sayansi, physics, chemistry, mathematics pamoja na biology kwa syllabus ya Tanzania na kwa level pamoja na advanced level. Dr. Mary Lectures for your better next exams performance. Subscribe, share and like this video. Welcome back friends. This is Dr. Mary Lectures. In the last session, we were discussing about the pancreas and the pancreatic juice, all about its secretions, which are involved in the process of digestion. And in this session, we are going to look about the intestinal juice. This is the process of digestion in the small intestine. Uh, intestinal juice, the mucus and sodium hydrogen component in the intestinal juice are made by the coiled blunus gland. So intestinal juice it is made of different components as we are we are going to see whether the enzymes are produced by the breakdown or lice of the cell at the tips of villi. So uh, in the intestinal juice uh, we have these components which we are discussing and we shall see how are they involved in the process of digestion. So our first component is mucus. Our mucus help to lubricate the intestinal wall and prevent autolysis. What is autolysis? If you don't understand the autolysis at all, just go and follow my cytology lectures in the part of lysosome, function of lysosome. Uh, when he was discussing about lysosome, we discussed the different functions of lysosome, like autophag, autolysis. Uh, if you don't understand completely, autolysis is called as the self-digestion of the cell. Now, as we know that uh, some of the uh, some of the enzymes which which are involved in digestion they are proteases and the body is made up of proteins so if the if the the cells could not have mucus the proteases could digest the cell which produce themselves because your mucus is very important to prevent the self digestion of the cells now the second component is amino salts such as sodium hydrogen carbonate uh, they are produced by Brunner's gland in order to neutralize the acid chime in the stomach and provide a more suitable pH for the action of the enzyme in the intestine. So amino salts, uh, they are functioning to, to neutralize the acidic chime from the stomach and provide the more suitable pH. As I told you before that the digestion in the intestine uh, takes place at the neutral pH of 7. As we discussed in biochemists, that the enzyme activity they are affected by the pH. But if you don't remember, just go review your biochemist, my biochemistry lectures, or you may visit even with some books like BS. Then you will see uh, different enzymes and in what conditions they are working. And then you have proteins in the intestinal juice. And here, another name for these proteins they are called erepsin. Uh, here we have exopeptidases called aminopeptidases. As I told you earlier, that carboxyl peptidases they break the polypeptide chain at the carboxyl end. Now here in the intestinal juice we have aminopeptidases which break the polypeptide at the amino end, which convert polypeptide into smaller peptide and amino acids. And then we have dipeptidases, uh, which hydrolyzes dipeptides into amino acids. So as we observed, the, most of the enzymes of the pancreatic juice, they digested the protein into the peptides. Now the dipeptidase are present in the intestinal juice and most of times here it is binded to the to the wall at the tip of the cell wall of the, of the intestine. And then from there we have interleukinase. Now we have interleukinase. Interleukinase is the non-digestive enzyme which activated the trypsinogen produced by the pancreas. As we discussed earlier in the pancreatic juice, that the interleukinase is an enzyme which, which activates trypsin, but it doesn't digest any food. So you see, in the absence of interleukinase, the trypsin could not be activated. And not only trypsin, as we discussed earlier, that uh, trypsin converts another protein, which is chymotrypsinogen. So, Without interleukinase, however, it does not digest directly, does not involve in the digestion directly, but it is essential. Uh, another component is in uh, nucleus, which converts nucleotides into 
pentose sugar phosphoric acid and inorganic acid uh, here the nucleotides they are made up of the three components as we can see we have the first component is pentose sugar pentose sugar and this is normally uh, ribose um, this is normal ribose respite uh, in, 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 in nucleic acid such as RNA we are calling ribonucleic acid so ribonucleic ribo simply means ribose ribonucleic acid so they are normally made up of ribose which is pentose sugar then another company is phosphoric acid and organic acids uh, some of the teachers they teach nucleotide as part of the biochemist uh, but to my to my concern nucleotide will be teaching in in genetics because it is how the syllabus shows uh, it's how the syllabus shows in biochemistry we just touched an introduction now let's move to carbohydrates which digest carbohydrate and here we have, we have different types of carbohydrates uh, our first category of carbohydrates is in amylus uh, amylus which help to complete the hydrolysis of starch to maltose then you have maltase which hydrolyzes maltose to glucose you have lactase which hydrolyzes milk sugar and then you have uh, sucrose which hydrolyzes here is sucrase um, which hydrolyzes sucrose into glucose and fructose uh, in some of the other animals they have some of the enzymes which can digest even cellulose uh, such as cellulose because cell cellulose cellulose is also a carbohydrate and it can be used as energy source in some of the animals especially in herbivores but for we it is difficult to it is impossible not difficult it is impossible to digest cellulose because we don't have the enzymes for digestion of the cellulose so uh, let's say a little about uh, the absorption of food in the oil in the ileum. I know some of people uh, they already know about this, and uh, as you revise your all level studies, the absorption is almost as the same. But here it is some of the concepts they are added. Absorption of the end product of digestion occurs through the villi of the ileum. But one thing you should know here that monosaccharide dipeptide amino acids are absorbed either by diffusion or active transport into the bloody capillaries. You see, monosaccharides, which is carbohydrate, and then proteins, they are absorbed into the bloody capillaries. The capillaries and veins carry the nutrient rich blood away from the villi, conveyed to the hepatic portal vein. Now you see, if you see any vessel is labeled as portal, a portal blood vessel is the one which connects between two organs, excluding heart. Kwa hiyo, yani blood vessel yote inayo connect kati ya organ mbili. Na kati ya zile organ mbili hakuna heart, hiyo ni yetu portal. Kwa mfano, ni kweli kuna blood vessel na yozo connect kidney na heart. But because among these two organs there is heart, that is not portal. So for example here, this is portal because it connects intestine with the liver. Then we have another portal circulation uh, in the hypothalamus. Hypothalamic hypophysio portal blood vessels. They, they, they drain the blood from the pituitary gland into the hypothalamus. And it's one among the mechanism of the, uh, of the stimulation of the... I mean they drain the hormones from the hypothalamus into the pituitary gland that is one among the mechanism for the hypothalamus to stimulate pituitary gland to produce hormones and we shall, we shall see later in detail when we'll be studying about coordination so from the liver because the hepatic vein hepatic portal vein hepatic portal vein uh, it leads the blood to the liver in hypercadam now from the liver blood travel to the heart and then to other tissue and organs. Now, what is the importance of the blood to enter the liver? Why? Why couldn't the blood be taken from the intestine and direct into the heart or into other bodies to 
Yeah, body organs to produce or to provide the energy. There is two about two importance of the food or the blood to pass through the liver. First, it allow liver to regulate distribution of nutrient to the rest of the body, uh, because the liver converts many organic constituents to different forms for use elsewhere. Blood leaving the liver may have a very different nutrient balance than the blood that he enters. Second, this arrangement allows the liver to uh, to remove or to remove toxic substances before they can circulate broadly. The liver is the primary site for detoxifying many organic molecules for aging the body for aging for the body such as drugs and certain metabolic waste product. Uh na choza kusema hapo ni kwamba hiyo arrangement ina faida mbili kama wewe ume, umeona hapo ina faida mbili hiyo arrangement kwamba faida ya kwanza ni regulation ya ni regulation ya chakula hapo kwamba chakula kikiwa kimezidi liva inachukua kile kilichozidi ina store kwa hiyo kistoa maana yake muda kinachohitajika inafanya ina release kwa sababu chakula kwenye blood ya kitaki kizidi wala kipungue some of the organs such as brain zinahitaji sana energy process ya glucose kupungua kwenye blood inaweza kusababisha brain ishinde kufanya kazi hence stroke na mtu anaweza kukafa so you see ndio maana ukifast yani ukiwa umefunga chakula kinatoka wapi kwenye liver maana yake conversion inatokea ina supply glucose kwenda kwenye nini kwenye blood so hiyo ni ukifast lakini kama ukiwa umekula Ko you see vitu ndio vinakuwa hivyo that is the function of the liver kwa nini blood inapita kwenye liver kwanza kwa ajili ya kuregulate nutrient pili kwa ajili ya ku detoxify in other words the rule of the liver is to regulate the variation uh, by storing excess where the level of the substance is above normal and releasing the stored substance when the level is in the hepatic port of vein is very low this is homeostatic regulation um, static regulation before it passes to other organs where the fluctuations of blood composition could be damaging in organs such as brain the fluctuation of the blood components such as glucose can damage the brain liver is able to break down any harmful substance absorbed by a process called detoxification as we shall discuss later in the topic of of excretion now let's see a little about the fatty acid and the glycerol because are uh, the pathway of the glucose and the protein is commonly known from the uh from the mesenteries then they are at the mesenteries they join to form the hepatic part of vein to the liver now what is the pathway for the fatty acid and the glycerol these they do not enter the hepatic part of vein so simply the fatty acid and the glycerol they do not pass through the blood these they diffuse into the columnar epithelium cells of the villi where they are reconverted into lipids so proteins present in the epithelial cell coat the lipid molecule to form lipoprotein droplets called chiromicrons so you see fatty acid and glycerol zikipita tu kwenye ile columnar epithelium zinaenda zinaungana tena zinatengeneza lipids kama ilivyo kwa mwanzoni before digestion so digestion hapo kumbe imesaidia tu ku cross ile epithelium zikisha cross zinaungana tena zinatengeneza lipids then these lipids zina coated na proteins zinatengeneza nini chylomicrons then these path out of the epithelial cell by exocytosis and into the lymphatic vessels into the lymphatic vessels in the villi they make the lymph in the lymphatic vessels appear white kwa hizi fat ndo zinazofanya lymph hiyo inaonekana white so the vessels are sometimes called lacteal vessels lacteal means milk milk lacteal vessels ina cause inaonekana kama nyeupe so the chylomicrons are carried by the lymph in the lymphatic system to the veins near the heart where they enter the liquid part of the blood that is the plasma kwa hiyo hivi vitu vingine ni anatomy anatomy maana yake ni muundo wa mwili kwa hiyo if you don't understand them now you can understand later in the university kama utasoma utasoma medicine ya utasoma anatomy lakini kama hautaelewa ni kwamba unachotakiwa kujua 
ni kwamba lymphatic vessels zote huwa zinaungana zinatengeneza kitu kinaitwa thoracic duct ile thoracic duct lymph yote huwa inaenda kuingia kwenye vein fulani karibia na kwenye hati kwa lymph ni kama vile maji ambayo inaenda kuingia inaenda ku mix na blood plasma tena if you don't know even the formation of lymph how does it formed kwa sababu unajua baadhi ya watu hamjasoma vizuri olevo biology kama mvusukusoma vizuri mimi in olevo ni kwa sababu sielewi hata lymphatic system ni nini yani uko kiniambia lymphatic system ni kwa sababu hiyo chote ukiniambia elephantiasis ni disease ya lymphatic system i didn't understand anything so stay with me in excretion nitakuelezea lymph inatengenezwa aje halafu kwa nini ina haja tena kurudi kwenye blood kwa sababu lymph composition of lymph is similar to the composition of plasma however lymph doesn't have the blood cells we shall see this later in the topic of excretion and i hope you will be together with me to discuss this concept of, of lymph so the lymphatic system the one which call lipid and the blood vessels which are near the heart so the calomicrons are carried by lymph in the lymphatic system to the vein near the heart where they into the liquid part of the blood which is the plasma and the enzyme in the blood plasma then it releases the lipid back to fatty acids and the glycerol in which form they are taken up by the cells so digestion of the lipids again redigestion takes place in the blood and after digestion taking place in the blood then the end product which are fatty acids and the glycerol they are taken up by the cells they may be used in respiration or stored as fat in the liver muscles uh muscles mesenteries or below the skin so uh, as you can see that in the in the in the in the mesenteries as we know mesenteries kama ujui ni kwamba kama ukichinja mbuzi au ngombe ule utumbo unakuwa umeshikwa kama na utando fulani that is what you call mesenteries na ukiangalia ule utando unakuwa kuna blood vessels zinapita mbele zetu zinaitwa mesenteries pia kuna inorganic inorganic salts vitamins and the water are also absorbed in the small intestine. Uh, the sphincter mass between the ileum and the and the cecum opens and closes from time to time to allow the small amount of material from the ileum to enter the larger intestine. So these these uh, they, they they are just absorbed normally as other components they are absorbed. And as you, as you, as you know that some of the components here like are in organic salt would require the active transport such as sodium hydrogen pump so as to, to enter the intestinal cells now note the efficiency of absorption also depends on the large surface area available and the way of the ileum achieves this in four ways how the 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 the, the way of the small intestine achieves the large surface area to volume ratio first is it's very long almost six meter almost six meter and then from from there uh, it is well avoided to f- to provide large intestinal uh-huh. intestinal projections uh, the folds have numerous thin finger like projections called villi and then the last adaptation is presence of the microvilli and the surface of the of the of the villi then you have microvilli which are very minute production uh, projections also help in the process of the absorption then you have some of the questions here these are taken from the bs and i hope if you will visit the bs we have the answers for these questions what would happen to the activity of the intestinal enzymes if the ph in the small intestine are remained at 2 uh what could happen here means the enzyme could not be functioning because the activity of the enzymes is affected by the is affected by the ph so sometimes bs provide very short answers Uh, if you ask it in the exam don't just write the answers write the answers but add your own explanations teachers also they look for the answers from bs and then after there they they want you to add some of the explanations so as uh so as you you will get many marks thank you everybody let me end up here Asante kwa kuongelea channel ya Dr. Mlewa. Ninaamini umeelewa kipindi na kama hujaelewa chochote waweza kucomment hapo chini. Click link ya kwenye description kujoin Telegram group kwa ajili ya discussion. Usisahau kusubscribe, kushare video kwa marafiki pamoja na kulike video hii.